Hello and welcome to So Bricks. I'm Adam and this is So Bricks. This is my channel for reviewing Lego sets and building them and other Lego related stuff. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Lego DC Batman Batman Mech Armor set. This is set number 76270. It has 140 pieces and I paid $15 for this set. This is one of the more recent uh, mech uh, armor sets. Uh, they do these for lots of different superheroes. They've sort of changed them over the years. Uh, now this one's, uh, they also do them in Star Wars now. Um, this one has the kind of new like pre-molded, pre-sort of angled uh, leg and arm pieces, although I'm not sure, we'll have to see, yeah, it, it does have both for leg and arms. Um, I was I, I really like these. I think they're fun. I think they're good toys. I like the price point generally. Um, but uh, I'm interested to see what's in here. I'm interested to see what I'm going to think about the legs. So uh, I picked this up. And in this video, I'm going to open this up. I'm going to put this together. And then I'm going to share my thoughts on it. So while I build, I will speed the video up. And then I'll slow it back down to review this set. So until then, enjoy. Okay, so while we look at the build for this Lego Batman Batman mech armor set, I just wanted to say thanks for watching. And then remind you, if you like the video, click the thumbs up. If you like my other videos, click the subscribe button. That helps a lot. We start off with the minifigure, of course. Then we work on building the kind of torso. For a while here, I thought I was missing a part, but I did end up finding it a little later on. So uh, not a huge issue. We can start working on the legs. They're built um, the same, just kind of mirrored right and left. The feet are identical. And then we can start working on the arms. Arms. This uh, right arm has the uh, stud shooter on it, and the other arm is slightly different because of that. And then there's a few more finishing touches here on the back, and that's it. So now on to my review for this set. Okay, so that is the Lego Batman Batman Mech Armor set. This is... Um, pretty interesting actually i i like it more maybe than i thought i would there's some things i think it does uh really well and so that's always nice to see and um there's a good amount of stuff to look at so we will just get into it and the first thing we will look at is the minifigure because this does come with a minifigure so it's a batman minifigure it's a pretty standard one it does have a batarang as an accessory there uh, so we can see that uh, cape is the single hole kind of the more spongy stretchy kind of one not super um, thick or starchy or or stiff. Uh, the cowl or helmet is the newer dual molded one so the eyes are uh, the white of the eyes are molded along with the black of the cowl which means we don't have a band a headband or anything on the minifigure head which I always appreciate so here we have Batman's face uh, there we do get an alternate face which is nice and then we can see how that frames up uh, with the cowl on there torso very standard bat logo utility belt some of the armor uh, nothing on the midsection nothing on the legs nothing on the arms back of the suit has the back of the utility uh, belt and some of the musculature for the armor there as well this is a very standard batman figure i would say which is okay i don't have any problems with that necessarily so uh not a bad way to get one of those and then the rest of the set is this batman mech armor this mech armor suit kind of thing um like i said they do these they've done some uh with ninjago uh star wars marvel dc um and uh i i like them generally speaking uh so that's cool and this one is pretty good so you start out by building the torso now this has a special piece kind of for the torso here it's got some studs on the back a technic pinhole in the bottom a couple studs in there to fit a figure but it's kind of an interesting molded piece also uses the the front kind of chest area though 
there is an interesting molded piece uh, and then we do have the printed bat sign here uh, also has these silver kind of rivets around there which I really like so that just clips in at the bottom so it can fold up we build up on the back of that I actually thought I was missing a piece at first but we just add a, um, a couple of these angled slope pieces and then we add kind of this jetpack uh, wing thing uh, more near the end um, then after you are done with the torso you build the kind of waist area here and this mech armor suit has kind of the utility belt uh, you know mixed in here around the waist and uh, this is pretty nice because this one does have waist rotation which I think is always helpful Batman doesn't have like a sword or anything like that but uh, always nice to have waist rotation because of the jetpack on the back though we can't like spin it 360 degrees still a pretty good range of motion for the arms after that's built we can build up the legs the legs are the same except mirrored typically I like these on um, these kind of mechs to be a little bit thicker I don't like when they're only like one brick thick or uh, or thinner if that's possible. I like to build up around the kind of pre-bent, pre, you know, special leg pieces here. So I thought I wasn't going to like this, but it's actually okay. So they attach with a mixel joint up at the hip, same on the other side. They're built, like I said, pretty much identical, but flip-flopped mirrored. We got the Nexonite shield there, some slopes around the side. We have the inverted tiles, the round one and the two by two inverted tile on the inside. Uh, and then we kind of build up the knee area here using this slope. It's only attached on that one stud. Uh, and then we have some ingots down here. And I actually like that. It covers up the kind of roundness of the knee. It looks more armored to me and there's kind of some like overlap here which I actually think looks nice so you know up at the top it's pretty much a brick thick uh, maybe excluding the inverted tile um, and I don't know if the Nexonite shield is as thick as a plate generally or um, as thick as a different tile but that's okay you know it gets down a little bit around the knee area we have some indent in there and then around the ankle it's built up a little more because we have the inverted tile and then the slope over here uh, as well as like a bracket in there so it's built out a little bit and then allows us to kind of curve back here so it's got a little more heft around there the feet I'm glad that they are two studs wide that's my my preference I don't like when they do them one stud wide I think the last one I remember doing that was maybe rocket but um, I can't remember if any of the Star Wars one had had that so um, that's fine maybe if they do then they have to make them like extra long to me but I like good stable feet that can be placed down so uh, these are built up with some like the two by four kind of plate with the Technic pinholes, got the inverted tile underneath, we also have the red translucent disc pieces there, maybe for some thrusters or lights or, or something of that nature, just the 1x2 hollow stud rounded plate at the back, and then there's a round jumper which we stick a mixel ball you know, piece with the bar uh, coming off the end and we slide that in you can kind of see that through the bottom of the uh, disc there and then just a slope piece wedge piece at the back so the feet don't have a ton of range of motion and the real limiting factor here is not just like the pieces there but it's it's more the way the mixel joints work so um, we can like kind of get a good amount of range of motion this way but forward and backward not a ton we can spin them all the way around which is fine and I just really like these to have um, to be like stable when just setting it down if it's going to be kind of a pseudo action figure or something like that we just can set it down and it'll be fine and then also like get it into some poses uh, this one it's only on one leg able to do that I think that's uh, good as well um, the knees not a ton of range of motion especially forward but backwards not too bad so we could get um, you know a running stance here I would just have to figure out how to balance this and it might be 
a little bit difficult. I, I would probably say it's possible, but, um, you know, something like that. We got the one leg here all the way back and kind of getting it into an action pose. Same uh, in the you know, kind of in the front, maybe if they were falling over, we could have the front leg, but that's limited a bit by the mixel joint up here, and then the utility belt and the hip piece. So we are, you know, have, have some limitations there. And then we work on the right arm first. Uh, this is nice because the arms are really bulky. The arms are actually like bulkier than the legs. So good build up around the shoulder here. I like the use of the ingots, feels very, um, um, armored, protected, it's thick. Uh, moving down, these use the same like pre molded, pre bent pieces here, just the inverted tile in the palm. And then um, this one has the kind of slight sloped piece here, a clip with a batarang in it. So I have one in the minifigure hand and another one here. Um, so technically you get two. I think typically one would be an extra piece, but maybe not. Uh, so we clip that there. I always love when they make room for accessories. We have the thumb and then we have the uh, three kind of um, uh, fingers here. And these are done, I think these are kind of the older mech fingers or are these the older mech fingers but also like a, a piece that's used for other stuff all the time as well um i'm i'm actually not sure these can't do a whole lot but they look about right i don't mind this piece for the thumb actually and then we can articulate all of those uh you know flay them out or keep them kind of together or something like that and then we have a stud shooter here that's studded on with a red stud kind of loaded in there red translucent we have another one here so that's good and because uh the way that this works we can move the arm you know we can spin it all the way around we can swing the arm forward they can't come like all the way to be like parallel with some of the chest there just because of how the mixel joints work and the um the kind of the pieces interfering with each other uh in the middle but you can like hold this up and maybe do it from the side you could also like rotate it a little bit and have it kind of like that out of the top which feels very batman to me and it can't like cross over the body very much so if you are aiming this you know you can do it out to the side maybe forward or off at an angle maybe forward a little more like this up in the air or at something above and then because we have the uh, hip rotation at least a little bit that does allow you to kind of go um, sort of across body uh, not you know a ton but it's it's something and I, I think that helps with the sort of um, how we're able to to move the arms there I think that helps with uh, making that work and then uh, the other arm built very similar not exactly the same but you know up at the shoulder it's pretty much the same just the hand is done a little, a little bit differently so the fingers are the same but the way you put these together aren't quite the same it's actually a little bit weird because the fingers here are kind of on the bottom but over here the fingers are kind of closer to the top in relation to that um you know piece here and the rest of the bulk of the hand but uh i don't know if that's t too noticeable but they're offset from each other by about you know maybe two plates or something um but this one has a batarang this is a buildable batarang here so there's a bracket with a stud in the kind of palm or fist area and we make this batarang it's just four pieces the like pyramid piece the um you know the one by one with a bar on both sides modified plate and then these bigger barb areas there so these can be kind of like folded up which is, is cool can be flayed out kind of get a middle ground there and this can be a batarang that is uh, scaled more towards the mech armor there which is nice and then um, we can have that stored in the hand which is great again you know there's not throwing action necessarily but it pops off pretty readily and this can be launched at uh you know perhaps the joker or or, or something um or any other kind of of the the 
rogues gallery of, of Batman and DC and stuff. So that's fine, but there was just a little bit of different building around the hand because of the lack of the stud shooter and then to accommodate the bracket on the inside and everything there. Again, we can move the fingers around a little bit. I'm not sure if you kind of fold this back more um, the thumb might get in the way a little bit and I just want to make sure I keep that studded on there um, it it's, it's sort of inconvenient but it's not terrible it could be worse it could also always be you know left off or, or something somewhere else but that's the hand and then uh, we do add the jetpack at the back which I, I quite like we have kind of the piece down here just a technic pin to this gold um, ac uh, sorry not an axle but a rim or a wheel centerpiece attaches up at the back so that feels cool to me i like the illusion that it sort of completes the uh utility belt a little bit we can see there is a gap back there uh because it just has these pieces these kind of claw or teeth pieces in the pearl gold kind of coming over there but when you're looking at it like straight on uh the you know maybe jetpack uh thing thruster uh actually kind of fills in that gap a little bit with a little more gold there very simple building up here and then we add these wings which uh, i didn't know how they're going to be done i couldn't quite tell from the um the box or from the instructions but they're kind of a technic panel piece here they can be you know swiveled they're just um have a uh, they, they pin in here and it's the you know uh, pin length plus one extra length of an axle there uh, and so we can kind of position those and I I actually really think that's cool it's but potentially makes it maybe a little bit back heavy but because there's you know it's not the, the balance isn't too too bad and it's easy to kind of lean it forward a little bit I think that looks better when it's leaning forward kind of a little bit like that it also makes it more stable and then uh, these can be for flying or gliding or or any other sort of action there which I really like it also appears to me that they kind of work as a sort of stand in for the cape I think um, having the cape there is uh, kind of uh, cool as well and then we can see what it looks like when we pop the uh, Batman figure in there I don't know if they can have their uh, am I, what am I doing here I don't know if it really works with the Batarang in their hand uh, while they're in the sort of cockpit area there but let me get them studded down. Have to move their arms a little bit. Studded down something like that. Uh, get them all closed up. And there we have the bat head in the cowl sort of sticking out out of there. And they're in this like full mech armor suit. So maybe the this one is kind of an extra piece because it's pretty light, these batarangs. And then uh, the other one that the minifigure might use is also clipped on here on the arm with the stud shooter so that is pretty cool i think it looks good in there the cap or the cape kind of goes back this way but again i think that adds to the illusion that these might be a cape or or wings or glider or something i think that's pretty nice and like i said you can uh, be a little bit inventive you're a little bit there's it's not the most uh, movable there's a, a little bit of range of motion for some of these things but there's also uh, uh, some some parts of it like the waist that help that a little bit so overall pretty good better than I thought it was gonna be and I um, yeah, I, I like this. This is pretty cool. So uh, that's good. I will show the extra pieces because you do get some. So you get a batarang, you get an extra of the stud. For the stud shooter, I have one loaded up in there. I have the other one over here. You get an extra one of those, so you actually would have like three. Uh, Technic pin, another kind of stud, a, a Technic piece here. And you're just your one by ones, your studs, your tiles, your plates, the little uh, trigger mechanism for the stud shooter all that good stuff and this set is 140 pieces and i paid 15 dollars for it so 15 dollars is pretty much this the price for these or has been for a while i know for like the thanos 
Hulk and Rocket ones. Those were some of the first ones I looked at. Those could be pretty reliably found on sale after a certain point. Um, I believe now, like the War Machine, the Miles Morales one, maybe even the Venom one can be found. Or maybe not. Is there a Miles Morales? Well, there is a Miles Morales one, but I think that's older but the venom one does come with a miles morales figure i believe um but i think those can be even found on sale um the star wars ones were 16 dollars retail i wasn't thrilled about that but um i think the first run of those with like darth vader and the stormtrooper and everything i think those can be found on sale uh somewhat regularly and that's okay i mean i i don't feel terrible about the 15 dollars price i think it's a nice price point to get i like these more than the construction figures generally especially because they're minifig sale scale i think they're kind of silly i think they're fun and i think they're uh, a good toy so i think this is like a sort of stand-in for an action figure is kind of nice but then also being able to take the minifigure out and use it with other stuff is cool i think this would be a cool addition to a a bat cave or or something else i i really um like that and there's some play features and uh good stuff so you know 140 pieces one minifigure for 15 dollars isn't terrible not a terrible price per piece a lot of small pieces in here um but that feels about right if it was 20% off we're looking at taking three dollars off which brings us down to twelve dollars I think twelve dollars is super fair for this honestly um, so 15 is not out of the ordinary and I'm glad it's not higher I think that I'm fine if they continue to make these and I would encourage them to continue to make these because I think they're fun and I think they're a good toy um, then I would you know I would hope that they would stay at $15 for you know a while maybe I don't know about forever but um, and, and I think you know more DC characters would be great Batman's probably the best selling for Lego as far as I can tell but um, you know I, I'd be super interested in seeing some villains in the DC universe and maybe there I think there has been a Joker mech but it was kind of a different sort of set so maybe working in this form factor with these sort of pieces um, that would be kind of cool and, and same with other other characters a Mr. Freeze one would be great that's another one where for the Lego Batman movie they did do a Mr. Freeze mech set kind of I think and they also did like the egg eggman egghead eggman mech as well i think um, but those are a little bit different so working within the constraints of this kind of current uh run of mech armor suits i think it would be cool to get get some other characters there but uh, uh nice to have this batman one and i think it's a fine deal i had fun building it fun talking about it it's a nice little toy so happy to have that and i think that's it so very good if you like this video please click the thumbs up and give it a like if you like my other videos click the subscribe button down below so you can stay up to date on all the lego videos i'll be doing here in the future including more mech armor suits more more Batman, more DC, and then tons of other Lego sets from all different themes, all different shapes, size, price point, piece count, tons of different stuff. So subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming Lego videos. And then if you wanted to support this channel by giving money to the channel, you could do that here on YouTube with membership supers and thanks. You can quote unquote buy me a coffee. There's a link in the description. There's also a link to the Patreon. All that helps financially support the channel. Um, it's not needed. It's not necessary. I want people to make good financial decisions, but if my values provide or my videos provide some value for you or you enjoy them um, there's a, a another way to support but I just appreciate all kinds of support and likes comments views uh, all that stuff but then if if people are interested there's other avenues as well so thank you very much and with all that said until next time thanks bye